Samuel chapter 7. Now it's interesting, in 1 Samuel chapter 4, the ark of God is in Ebenezer, a stone of help. It is taken by the Philistines and brought in the Philistine area. And it brings death. It brings plagues upon the Philistines. In chapter 5, it degrades their God. Verse chapter 5. Chapter 6, we read about death and it comes back into the camp and there's great celebration. The ark has come back. And then when we look at chapter 7, if you cannot see Jesus Christ and the gospel, the fact is in 1 Samuel chapter 4, Adam and Eve was in the garden with God. And he sinned. And he rebelled against the word of God. And he's driven out from the presence of God into the world. And gods are made. And the Bible says it wasn't unto his third son Seth that men began to call upon God. And they serve other gods. They try their means to get to God by their own ways. In chapter 6 there were plagues. There were uh, death. And yet God comes back into the picture. Men began to call upon God. God reaches out. God's not willing that any should perish. In chapter 7, verse 1. And the men of Kirch of Jerem came and fetched up the ark of the Lord. In chapter 6, the Lord, the ark has come to Joshua field, the Bethlehemite, the house of Shem. Of all the people, it had to be one child of, of Noah, the Shemite, the line of Jesus Christ. Joshua, Jehovah saves, is where these mother cows brought the new cart with the ark on it and we looked at they looked into the ark so we saw that possibly that that mercy seat is gone and god killed them and god says you cannot look upon me moses and live i've got to put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand and at the right hand of god today is jesus christ and the men of kirchhoff again came and fetched up the ark of the lord and brought it into the house of Abinadad. Now you want to, let's start going. Here we go. Abinadad, a father of willingness. My salvation is a free will. It's willing that I was told what the gospel was. I told that I was going to hell by the Bible. I had a free will and I was willing to come to Jesus Christ. I was willing of what God told me to do and to believe as the house of Bimlik willingness, father of willingness, in the hill, upon a hill far away, upon a cross, up on that hill, the skull, Calvary, Golgotha, the hill of the skull. They say it's a hill because it was shaped like a skull on top of a head. The high cross, the middle cross, is where Jesus Christ suffered and died. And sanctified, set apart for God, Eliezer, the help of God, the help of Jehovah. Look at these names. We have been out of the will of God. We have been in the Philistine area. We've had other gods. We've been plagued. And we come back to the Father of willingness. We come back to the help of God. We come to a hill called Calvary. Eliezer his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass while the ark abode in Kirch of Jerem that the time was long. It's been a long church age. For it was 20 years. That's a long time in the Bible, 20 years. 20 is an interesting number, one of those interesting numbers in the Bible. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. It was an absence. The ark's over there. And we really haven't got the true victory. And Samuel spake unto... There's no high priest anymore. He's dead. He broke his neck. The priests that are under the high priest, the next priest, they are lying on the battlefield dead. The ark is not in Shiloh, where the tabernacle is. We are in a confused state. We are in the book after Judges. And I don't mean Ruth. We are in the period of the judges where every man did that was right in their own sight. It's chaos. 
And with the death of Eli and his wicked son, Samuel spake unto the house of Israel. So we're going to go right back into order now. If ye do return, if you will repent, that means return. So the hope of a man who is outside the will of God is you got to come to a hell. You got to be willing. You need the help of the God, the help of Jehovah, the Holy Spirit to come to you. And you need a man to come up and say, you got to repent. You got to return unto the Lord with all your hearts. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And watch this. That put away the strange gods. That's repentance. Get rid of the gods. They're all around. Astrid, queen of heaven. Got to put away Mary. Mary can't do it. You got to put away the uh, Moyers. She can't do it. You got to come to the sun. You say you're preaching. You say, teach. I love the word. I love the gospel. From among you. There she is, right amongst them. This is the same asterisk that's going to give Jeremiah trouble. Prepare your hearts. For with the heart, man please unto righteousness. Unto the Lord. That's the same message I preached 2018 with Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins with your heart. Put away the gods and come to Jesus Christ with your heart. Unto the Lord. And serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So the Philistines are still tormenting and torturing and causing problems for the children of Israel. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam. Samuel said asterisks and gods. And asterisks. So run asterisks back to asterisks verse 3. That, that's concluded, right? Asterisks is asterisks. Plain and simple. You see that gods? That's Balaam. I am is plural. Baal, S, gods. And it's in the same order, the Holy Spirit. Balaam is not just the sun god, the, the main deity of all the nations. It's all the gods. It's all the gods that Baal and Astra have got together and created. Baal, the big sun god. Worship at the sunrise service, Jeremiah tells Asterisk, the moon god. You know, she has her 28 days, her cycle. And she reflects the light of the sun. And they got together and they had children, stars. And that's where you get your, your horoscope by looking at the moon, the sun, and the stars. They were never meant to be that way. When they look at tarot cards and all that, that's the gods of Baal and Asherah. And they are many, many names. Some names is Zeus. From among you, prepare your hearts unto the Lord. Serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistine. Then the children of Israel did put away Baal and Asherah. True repentance. And serve the Lord only. True repentance. Getting right with God. And Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah. You find that spelled with an E-H and an A-H. Mizpah. And I will pray for you unto the Lord. Let's get everybody together at one particular spot. You realize Jesus Christ is going to do that with his church one day. He said, all right, come on, let's gather all the Christians together in one spot. Do you know what Mizpah means? It means watchtower. And I ain't talking about the Jehovah Witnesses. We're going to a spot that's higher than any higher place that every man has gone without his power, without few. By the power of God, we are going to the clouds one day. Jesus is going to say, come, let's gather together. And I will pray for you and the Lord, unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah. And drew water and poured it out before the Lord. Now some say this is a feast of tabernacles. That this is what Jesus did in chapter 7 verse 2. And you can run the references Deuteronomy 16. Leviticus 23. Again John 7, 2 and verse 37. 
and Zechariah 14. They said this is the Feast of Tabernacles, which would be the seventh month. If so. Before the Lord. And fasted on that day. No food, no water. And said there. Now watch the repentance. We have sinned against the Lord. It's not my neighbor I, I defrauded. It's not my mother I mistreated. It's not my wife I've gone against. It's not the person that I lied to. It's not the person I made name. I have sinned against the Lord. That is true repentance. They were not divorced. They said it on their own willingness to serve God. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, God is faithful to judge. I mean, God is faithful to judge. God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. They are doing a new command, New Testament commands to judge yourselves. Judge ourselves. They are finding themselves at fault with God. And they're coming up to Samuel and say, Samuel. And yet they're not professing to a man, but say, Samuel, I did this. Is that something I have to repent of to God? And he would say, yes or no. And they would get right with God. Samuel, I've done this against God. What sacrifice do I bring? They are coming to Samuel. He's not the priest, but now he's the priest because the priests are gone. They're dead. They failed. And he's a judge. The book of Judges doesn't end at Ruth. It continues through Ruth. A period of time that we don't know when Ruth happened in Judges. And yet 1 Samuel picks up with Judges until the death of Samuel. And by the death of Samuel, we have a king, King Saul. Samuel is a judge. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together at Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. They didn't get right. Man, they saw God, God, how has this problem happened? Lord, if you show us how and why this is happening, and God did, drove those animals right to the spot where they said, and they did not repent as Israel repented. They went back to their God, and now they say, hey, these Israelites, they're gathered together in one place. They're there, like Pharaoh said. They're gathered together. We're going to go kill them all. Let's go. Get up on their horses and go. That's what. Chapter 6, verse 6. Wherefore, then do ye harden your hearts, as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts, when he had roughly, wonderfully among them, did they not let the people go, and they departed? You knew the history of Israel. You knew the history of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said, we've got them locked in. We're going to go kill them. And they ended up drowned in the water. They're saying the same thing many years later. Israel is in one place. Let's go kick their butt. But they forgot God's going to kick their butt. You see, they knew the history. But they didn't listen to history. And what history is going to play out again is you never learn from history. History is important. History, if they would have been mindful of the children of Israel, they would say, this sounds familiar. We got to do something here. Because we are falling in the same hands as those Egyptians that drowned in the Red Sea. But they say they gathered together in and the lords of Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines, as they were afraid of the Egyptians at the Red Sea. Ah, what do we do? Here they come. Moses, you couldn't kill us. But the children of Israel wised up. The children of Israel said unto Samuel. They didn't blame Samuel this time. Like they blamed Moses. Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us. That he will save us out of the hand of the This time Israel's like, Samuel, we are in trouble. There's only one thing we can do. Pray to God. And you see that cry? That doesn't mean boo-hoo-hoo-hoo. That means let it out. And that may include tears. That may include a loud voice. That may, hey God, we're desperate. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering. 
and holy. Romans 12, 1. Holy. That does not holy, H-O-L-Y. And this is important for Christians. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Holy. Paul gives a greater command, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, I'm not going to force you, but I plead. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, saved Christians, be, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. That's a different spelling. That's a different spelling. Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Look at that. Same thing going on here. Let's give God all that we are. Let's give it all. Holy. Unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. And the Lord heard him. It's great when God listens and hears you. Now sometimes God, when we pray to God, God hears. He hears everything. But there are re three responses to prayer by God. Number one, yes, we love that one. Number two, no, we don't like that one. Number three, not now, later. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. This is not good. We are at the time of repenting. We are at the time of getting right with God and the enemy shows up. The sower went out to sow seed. Some fell by the wayside and the birds or Satan came along. And also we learn but they, when you get right with God and you become a 30, a 60 or a hundredfold, you get saved. And you are now, hey, I'm going to get right with God. You have now got Satan on your heels. Because the worst thing that Satan could do for you, according to Egypt, and according to the Roman government, is take those babies and kill them before they can grow up and serve the Lord. You see, Satan wants you dead. Because now you are a child of God and if you grow and if you are nurtured by the word of God and you grow to a young child, you grow to a young man and you have studied the word and you have nursed yourself with the word of God and grown by God and God can use you as a clean vessel, you have become an enemy to him and hell and the world. Because if you do what the Bible tells you to do, you're going to go out in the world and tell people about Jesus. And Satan is not going to like that at all so they come and Samuel was offering up the burnt offering the Philistines drew near the battle against Israel but the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines now this is weird not only is this a thunder it's a great thunder and the thunder was on the Philistines now, I've been out in a thunderstorm, and I love thunder. And I've sat in a house and had the house shake with thunder, but I've never had thunder on me. Those troops are rallying to kill Israel, and God gave them a thunder on them. And watch, and discomforted them. Not lightning. They didn't get striped with lightning. The thunder that came upon them discomforted them. And they were smitten before Israel by the thunder, not lightning. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the, 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 the yeah, and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came to Bethkar. I'm going to play. I'm not really joking, but Beth means house. <laughs> And car, well, we know what cars are today. That would be a garage. 
But you know what that means in the Bible, in the Hebrew, Beth Car? You know what car is? Funny. It means house of lambs. C A R in the Bible is lambs. Beth is house. And there's one maker that has a car and they call it a ram. There's another car dealer that Ford, and it is a proven fact by history that he was friends with Adolf Hitler and did not like the Jews. And even published his own publications against Jews. I don't know anything else about the other car makers. Hebrew words are interesting. So in this story of the hill, of a willingness, of Jehovah, we've got a house of lamb. What other house can that be? The house of Israel that's saved. The Christians that are saved. John chapter 10. Other sheep of, I have, but not of this fold. And yet I've never seen a church called Bethkar. And I've been thinking about that. The Lord gives me a church. I may call it Bethkar. It's a good name. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen. <clears throat> What's Shen mean? Tooth. Why tooth? I don't know. And called the name of it Ebenezer, a stone of help. We have a stone that helps us, the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you go back to chapter 4, verse 1, and the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Samuel means ask of God. Now Israel went out against the Philistines in battle and pitched beside Ebenezer. We are right back to where we are in chapter 4. That ark has gone all the way back and we are where we were in chapter 4. The Philistines are coming to battle again. And this time... Israel's doing right because the priest is doing right, Samuel. The last time the priest and his sons were wicked, and God said, Hey, the glory has departed, Ichabod, the mercy seat went, but there's the ark. And you got to ask yourself, which I don't understand, is it says in chapter 4 they pitched besides Ebenezer. That's a place. Samuel takes a stone and puts it there and he calls that stone. The name of the place Ebenezer. It looks like it's not named unto chapter 7 verse 10. And the writer of Samuel went back and he says over here. Alright chapter 4. Though it didn't have a name. I'm going to write in here Ebenezer. Because that's what Samuel is going to call it. And there have been times in the scriptures that somebody's gone back. You know, there are places called Dan in the Bible before Dan was even in the promised land. Because God told Moses, well, that's what the name of the place is going to be. So when you read in chapter 4, Ebenezer, that was added later because that place is named here. By Samuel. By the victory. That God has given over the same Philistines. That in between that time, they could have got right. The five lords of Philistines. Hey, guys, guess what? What? That cart, those animals, went right to Bethlehem, like we said it was going to. Well, that's kind of funny, because you know what? I'm healed. <laughs> you know what we need to do? <laughs> what? We need to tear Tagon down like he's already broken in pieces. We need to burn that thing. We need to get over there in Israel. Instead of fighting them, we need to get right with them. And their God. That's what they should have done. But instead, a thunder comes. A 
and discomforts them, and they are brought down in battle. And God reached out to him and said, hey, if that's what you want for proof. So the Philistines were subdued. And they came no more into the coast of Israel. Now coast, that means the, the boundary line. That doesn't mean like a beach. Or sand and water. That's the boundary line of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. He said, well... Didn't the Philistines fight Saul? Didn't the Philistines fight David? Yeah, all the days of Samuel, there was no Philistine problem. The Philistines feared Samuel. Hey, ain't messing with that guy. Man, you believe what that guy and his God did? Why didn't you come across and get right with that guy? That's the world. And the cities of the... And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel. So Israel lost land. And under Samuel, they get it back. From Ekron even unto Gath. And the coast thereof did Israel deliver out of the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Done with the battles. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. We are still in. He's a prophet. He's a priest. And he's a judge. He's just not a king. So Samuel in the life of Jesus Christ, the prophet, the priest, and the judge, but not he's not the king. And he went from year to year in circuit. And that's where you get the word circuit writer. Out of the Bible. There would be evangelists in early America and European nations. They would go from town to town, city to city, to uh, what do you call it? meadows, to fields, and they would stop, see a group of people, and they say, Hey, can I preach to them? And it happened up in New England, in, in, in uh, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. They would go to the mills and go up to the owner of the mills. <coughs> or the people in head who say, listen, at lunchtime, when they're sitting down and having their lunch, can I preach to them? And they would get permission. And they would say, okay, here we are in Florida. So get, in Daytona Beach on the 17th to the 25th, this man will be coming into town. His house is over there. We got anything to do with God. We got anything to pray about God. We got any interest in God. He will be there during that time. He's going to preach during that time. So we're going to set our hearts to go hear him. We're going to set our hearts to go listen to him and seek him to get to God. That's what it is. From the year to year to Bethel, that means house of God. Years later, when northern Israel, they're going to turn that Bethel into the house of calves under Jeroboam. But Bethel right now means house of God. The El. The El. That's Jehovah. Beth is house. Like up there in Beth Tar. And Gilgal. And Mizpah. Where we are right now. That seems to be his headquarters. And he judged Israel in those places. That was his route. You didn't cross his routes. You didn't dare to say, okay, I'm going to go to Bethel. You would say, uh, Samuel, I know Bethel's your area. you get permission. And he returned from Ramoth, for there was his house. So he had four cities. Bethel, Gilgal, Mizpah, Ramah. For there was his house. And there, at his house, he judged Israel. From his house. From the cities that he had. He would judge the people of Israel. There was no one else. There he judged Israel. And there he built an altar unto the Lord. To serve God.
I was gonna say something else, but I haven't. 